It is Monday, April. Uh, it is Monday, April eighth. We're live Monday, April eighth, inside the vault here. I'm Bobby Trossa, as always, joined by my co-host Sarah Ellison. Welcome into a little Ravens lunch hour live stream presented by our friends at Manta Sleep. Lots to discuss throughout the next hour, as always, especially after a couple days off over the weekend. Kyle Van Noy caught up with the Lounge, the Ravens podcast, and had a number of things to say, and even. I would say constructively challenged Lamar Jackson and his teammates. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be there for the next couple of years in Baltimore. He is back. That was last week's big news. We'll get into that and share some clips from that interview along with Jeremy Fowler's latest that came in. I was just chilling on like Friday night, Sarah. And next thing you know, Jeremy comes on the TV and starts talking about the Ravens plans at wide receiver, whether it be through the draft or this sort of like second wave, third wave non-first wave of free agency. Whether it was smokescreen or not, we'll discuss. Some off-season player workout or workouts are surfacing this time of year. And a happy 27th birthday to our guy, Roquan Smith. All that Ooh, more is coming up. But we begin with the BYU, the former BYU Cougar. Is former the right word when you graduated from, from, a, from a college? What's the word? BYU alumni, right? Like a there alum. Here we go. There we go. Yeah. So Kyle Van Noy. Um, fresh off of his signing, goes and does this interview with the lounge. You can go check it out. Uh, he is clearly excited about re-signing with the Ravens. We can see that he tweeted over the weekend, man, Lil KVN back in Reno would be kicking himself right now if he knew he would be signing a contract going into his 11th season. Super blessed. Thanks for all the love over the last two years, uh, or the last two days. It means a lot, peeps. So he's super happy. And then uh, yeah, go check out his his full interview with The Lounge. But there were two themes, Bobby, after listening to it that I thought really stuck out to me. One, as you mentioned, him challenging the team, including Lamar Jackson, uh, because Lamar is the leader. So we'll get into that. And the second thing was just like how much he wanted to come back. He just yeah. he wanted to be here. He feels like he fits it. So uh, we'll get into those two things to start off. So. The, the first kind of question posed from the lounge um, was like they had Arthur Mallette after he signed and he had told them, you know what? I One of the reasons why I wanted to come back is because we have unfinished business. And so they asked him is like one of the reasons why you wanted to come back about unfinished business. And he didn't want to go down that road but he did feel like there were things to do, and that's when he challenged the team. I don't, I don't want to get into the saying of unfinished business, but I think there's things that we want to do, things that we want to accomplish. I really bought into what we were doing last year. I really believe um, that we have the pieces. I think we just, as a group, need to put in a little more work and whatever it is, whether it's a little more film or a little more after practice or just a little bit a little bit more. And I think if you just put um, a couple more percentages in every, you know, in different areas, whether it's, you know, nutrition, whether it's, you know, treatment, um, I think, or film, you know, plays, whatever, whatever it is. I think we could just put in a little bit more as a group and I think we can uh, be a little bit more successful. I think to have a leadership of Lamar Jackson and Roquan Smith leading your team, like not, ev not it, that doesn't just happen every year, but to have those type of guys and to be the leaders of the team is I'm excited to see their chip on their shoulders that they have and see how they lead us this year. But like you, you know what it takes. You've done it. You, mm -hmm. you're one of the guys on this, on this team that's, that's hoisted that trophy. And, and so I look at Lamar and, and knowing how bad he wants to win it. And as a veteran player, when you look at him and, and how much he's driven by that, like how do you see that kind of affect everybody on this team from a leadership standpoint? Yeah, it's a standard, um, he sets the standard of excellence, of perfection, um, and I think he needs to take it to another notch, personally. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a knock on him that he's not doing a good job. I just think he can take it another stop, right. another notch because right. he's that that good and he, he can be that great. Mm -hmm. And if he does that, then everybody else 
is going to take it up a notch. Mm-hmm. And I know he will because um, I'm pretty sure he took that loss uh, last year as just as tough as anyone, if not the toughest, because he's the franchise quarterback. So all of the weight is on, on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. So I can imagine when he comes back, he's going to be ready. So a lot of trash talking at practice, a lot of competition. <laughs> I'm excited. You're going to give him some of that trash talk too, I assume? Yeah, of course. We're, <laughs> bo- we're both from Broward County. All right. So... Yeah, so kind of a longer clip, but I wanted to play it in full just so that nothing was kind of, and I even I even chopped it up a little bit, but I wanted to make sure it was, you know, coming off of being like, did you sign again? Because it was unfinished business. You guys got knocked out of the AFC Championship game. You thought you were better than that. He's like, you know, I don't want to really look back, but yeah, we have stuff to do. But then he challenges them. Take it up another notch. And then he specifically says it to Lamar because you, because you have to, right? It's like who he's your leader. And he, and he talked about Roquan and he first talks about, I don't think you guys understand. This is not normal to have these superstars on both sides of the ball. Like you have leadership on both sides. And then he first challenges both. He goes, I'm excited to see what kind of chip they're going to have on their shoulder after last year. Right. And then Garrett follows up with Lamar specifically. And he's like, yeah, I want to see him take it up another notch because he's the standard. He thinks he will, but this is what he's bringing to the table, Bobby. He's he's won a Super Bowl before. He's a fun, playful dude, but he's also serious. He's a workhorse. So what's your reaction to him saying, hey, everybody's got to take it up a notch, including Lamar? I love it. I absolutely love it. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion. So this guy understands what it means. He's got that championship pedigree. And, and I think what's most refreshing about that is that coming off um, an MVP campaign, you know, for the second time in Lamar's case, and coming off uh, a, a certain position in which the Ravens hadn't been taken in the Lamar Jackson era, you can kind of sit back and be like, "Oh, Lamar taking it to the next notch. How do you get it? To- how do you get it? You know, higher than what he's already taken it to coming off last year." But then you can pinpoint certain things, whether it be the deep ball game, whether it be the early season turnovers, right? Ball security. Like there are ways even after a second MVP campaign for him to improve. And I think when you when you have a guy that's on the other side of 30, that has championship pedigree in his blood, that understands what it means to win, what understands what it means to continue chipping away at mm-hmm. what they're chasing, there's nothing bad that can come from that. If anything, it's going to demand excellence from each other. It doesn't always have to just come – from the top at the quarterback position, even though, right, especially with Lamar, Lamar's a different leader. We've talked about that time and time again throughout his career. He's not the Ray and he's not the, there's, there's no Ray Lewis in him and that's fine. When you have your teammates, when you have the guys that you suit up with, you go to war with on Sundays, preaching that kind of and demanding that kind of excellence I just think as as they continue this chase, it, it, it can become so monotonous at times, especially yeah. this time of year. And when you have a true seasoned vet who's coming back, he's happy to be in Baltimore. Speaking like that, I don't think you can put a price tag on the importance of that, even though you you it's 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 immeasurable. It's immeasurable. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I I love it too. I love it too. Because listen it's all about who it comes from. Right. And if we're and where the motivation of these challenges are coming from, when you and I challenge each other, if you, when you don't do it often, but when you challenge me or if I challenge you, I feel like we both know it's because we know that there's still more juice that you could squeeze out and you can, and you know that there's more in there, there's more potential. And like, I think sometimes like I was reading, talked to my husband about this. We were reading um, this story about how cyclists train for the Tour de France. And it gets down to the point, right, where when you're competing against the best in the world, you have to look for any advantage within the rules of the game. Okay. Now we know <laughs> some of the past, the Tour de France hasn't done that, but, but you do. But my point is yeah. to the point where they're like, I'm going to shave, I'm going to shave the hair on my arms. I'm going to shave the hair on my legs. I can shave all the hair on my legs. I'm not going to beat the Tour de France guys, right? It doesn't matter. 
But when you're that close to each other, you go and shave your legs because maybe it will give you a fraction of a second of an edge over your competition. So when you have a team like you have, to his point, you there's not a lot of teams that have a Lamar Jackson in that star status and a Roquan Smith in that star status. So how many people can truly come in and say, no, I want more from you? There's not a lot of people with the footing who can say that and come from a place that's of love and out of I want what's best for you and for me and the whole team. You're not going to get a rookie in here that can come in and say, hey, Lamar, I want more from you. Hey, Roquan, I want more from you. You don't you don't have the footing to do that. Almost anybody can 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 go to a rookie, though, and say, hey, Rook. Welcome to the NFL. Let me let me give you a, a welcoming moment. Almost anybody can do that. But there's it's only so many people that can look Lamar in the eye. Or remember um Marlon Humphrey said during the season that Lamar yeah. came to him and yeah. said, No, we need more from you. It's only so many people that can do that. And that's what you need. I want somebody who's gonna come in and challenge me. And and you're not gonna be defensive about it. It's like, yeah, you know what? You're right. And you pushing me is going to make me go to even the next level. So I love everything about it because I know KVN's coming from a good place. I know he's coming from a place yeah. that's like I've been there before. And so and and I have the footing to do it because I want it twice. So here we go. And notice how he was very nonchalant with clarifying that it's not like taking a shot at Lamar or it's nothing personal yeah. when, when he when he singled him out personally. I I think that really stems from just the trust that they have in that locker room. There's a collective universal belief that now, of course we're referring to last year's team, but I would assume a lot of it's going to, especially the ones that are returning, it's going to trickle down to this upcoming season. And so for Kyle to speak like that in such a matter of fact way, mm. that to me is, is actually very revealing because he was comfortable to do so. Now he clarified it just so that it probably didn't blow up into some massive storyline. Well, because you know how the national media can be. Calling out whatever Lamar they Jackson. can get. Yeah. Kyle Van Noy calls out Lamar Jackson. <laughs> yeah. He clarified that so that that didn't happen. What I think, which I think is incredibly thoughtful, thoughtful, and also just experienced. He understands. Right? <laughs> right. He understands it. And so, but at the same time, I think it was such a nonchalant thing to have to clarify because of what happens inside just how strong suited inside those walls are of the locker room. And so what, you know, it might be easy to think from the outside looking in, oh man, they, they were one play away, two plays away from getting to where they want to be to play for what they want to have. We don't need to change that much. No, you do. And, and yeah. the fact that Kyle, he may not even think Sarah in his heart to hearts that there's a lot of areas to improve upon with Lamar coming off an MVP season. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Keep your nose to the grindstone. You're a player two away. That just, to, to me, that that's how you breed excellence. And the rookies that come in, the free agents that come in this offseason, it's all gonna it's it's gonna be a new, there's gonna have to be a new collective belief formed. Right. But as long as you have those key pieces and those blue chip players that they do have, yeah, and the experienced veterans like Kyle Van Noy, it's easier to recreate that. You know what I was also I was just thinking this on the cuff because because he he kept saying just getting one percent better and all that because that is what it takes. The Ravens have been talented enough for years yeah. to win the Super Bowl and 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 maybe they might not have as talented a team as last year. That remains to be seen, but we know they've lost a lot. But it it doesn't matter. Like the pieces, the the the, the foundation is there. Okay, and so like you haven't we haven't made it yet. So we have to dig that one percent more. And and let me say this. He talked about how good of a relationship he has with all the front office. Uh, talking about John Harbaugh, Eric DaCosta, and Steve Bashotti, by the way. He talked about how, like, he talks to Steve Bashotti. He's like, I can call him. And he's like, it's gotten to the point that I'm talking trash with him about golf, you know, like just this good stuff. So I'm just extrapolating this because never in this, he always called out his players, his teammates. But I also feel like Kyle Van Noy is the type of guy that could pick up the phone and say, Zach Orr, let me let me tell you something. Or John Harbaugh, let sure. me tell you something. Maybe not, maybe not Todd Todd Munkin because that's not really you know that's like a different wheelhouse or whatever. 
because that 1% has to come from the coaching staff too, or that 2% or whatever it is. And I got the feeling with the way he talks with everybody and the way they're like one phone call away and he says they'll pick up and they talk because they're all about relationships and he's got a solid relationship. Because he's the player coach, hope he's got to be that voice for the players back up too. You know what I mean? And so it's like, and, 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 it, and if he needs to pick it up, hopefully they all feel like they can challenge him too. But that's, that's what you need. Cause I can remember when I was working, working at the Ravens, I remember one day coming out and I was headed to go to the bathroom. And, um, if you've ever been in the castle, like there's the, when you first enter, there's that big, uh, entrance way where during Christmas they, they have the tree up, but they've got the fireplace. They got the two Lombardi trophies. And I kind of passed by there to go to the the bathroom, but on the other side of that are all the player meeting rooms. And um, there's two like leather couches when you first walk in there and Ray Lewis and John Harbaugh were out there. And I feel like maybe they had just come out of meeting rooms and they kind of got um, caught up into a conversation. I don't know what they were talking about, but it was John kind of leaning up against the arm of this couch and Ray was exactly how you picture right he was passionate and he's like talking to john and he's like da, 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 and he's got his hands going and john's just sitting there and he's being great and i think this is why he's great especially with those veterans and john's like listening to him he's got the body language that like i hear you i hear you and ray was just going on and on and on yeah. and i know it was going on and on and on and on because i went to the bathroom <laughs> did what I had to do, <laughs> washed my hands, came back out and Ray is still like yeah. going, you know? And, um, and I was just like, I loved watching that. Cause it was like, that's the player going, talking back to the coach. You know what I mean? In, in a good way. And like, and, and I don't know that it's just things that fans don't see that like, it's a constant back and forth and it's a building together and um, I don't know how many players feel at ease to do that all the time. I know there's that leadership council, but I just loved seeing that John was so open to listening to Ray and what they were doing. And I could see Kyle Van Noy, while in a different, in his own way, I could see him doing the same with the coaches. Before we continue to get to more takeaway clips from KVN's recent interview with the guys on the lounge, this episode is brought to you by our friends at Manta Sleep. And just take a look at what the Manta Sleep Mask offers. It brings you a little bit of everything. You got true 100% blackout for a deeper sleep. C-shaped eye cups gives you unbeatable side sleep comfort. Zero pressures applied to your eyelids or lashes. And you've got advanced materials and ventilation for unmatched breathability. That's the Manta Sleep, the Manta sleep Mask Pro that you just saw on the screen. This is the one that I rock every single night. Sarah's kids got the Bluetooth version. I mean, they just went all out for you. I don't need Bluetooth at night, but if you wanted Bluetooth for whatever reason to listen to your podcast or listen to some sort of white noise as you were going to sleep, that that's uh, that's offered as well. So best part is for our Vault subscribers, if you use code Vault10, that's discount code Vault10 at purchase, you'll get 10% off your next deal. So hop on mantasleep.com. You can find the link in the show notes below if you want to get started today. Uh, join join our join our crew, Sarah's kids, myself. We've all become sleep mask aficionados. We Thanks got the man. one that you just put up. We got, as you said, the Bluetooth one, and then we got the uh, silk one. And everybody has one that they like. It's it's very popular in my household for sure. Go check them out. Mantasleep.com in the show notes below. What else did KVN have to say? Okay, so I just to finish up this work thing, it was kind of funny. So obviously they talk about, okay, well, now that we're pushing people and whatever, they ask about the young guys, right? Odafe Owe, David Ajabo, Malik Ham, uh, Tavius Robinson, probably going to be a draft pick. And of course he's like, oh, I'm going to push him. Uh, and then, you know, and I'm, I'm setting this up cause I pulled it from three, like this theme I'm telling you was him pushing people to, to work harder. So he, he's talking about the, the young pass rushers. Then he talks about losing, um, defensive players, but he's like, we just got to work harder. And then I thought this was hilarious. Mink, Ryan Mink, uh, has a good little comeback with all this chat about hard work that I thought was a fun note to add on with this talk about hard work. Those guys know that I'm going to push them and they know that I, I'm always going to help them. Mm -hmm. um, I want them to be just as successful as me, if not more. That's just my attitude. Mm -hmm. I love winning. And so if that 
whatever fashion that is, things are looking up and we just got to continue to work. I think at the end of the day, you know, less talk and more work. So you talk about the work. One thing I have to ask you, the big question, I remember a certain press conference after a game uh, when you had a big game and you said, who needs training camp? <laughs> but now you're signed in April now. Uh, yeah, KBN, that's so, awesome. So what are you thinking? What do you think? That's awesome. Well, it's April. <laughs> right, we got a long way to go. Yeah, he's like, so, you know, didn't have to work then and it still worked out. That was, I thought that was hilarious. But um, that is definitely an anomaly to come in week three and then go on and put up nine, nine sacks. And it actually, I think, speaks to his work ethic and working alone, that you are working alone all off season, <laughs> including training camp, including the preseason, including the first three games of the season. And then you come in and then off the couch. You never have an injury and you're just able to produce like that. Like that to me, he, he jokes who needs training camp, but you know, he was working hard. You know, he was, in fact, I remember one time, um, the Pat McAfee show called him randomly to ask a question, uh, you know, about BYU. And of course they get him, uh, at the gym and he's like sweating, sweating, sweating. And he takes the phone call and it's like, this is what he does 24 seven. You know, you know, he lives in the gym. Yeah. And it makes me think, too, that it requires a certain type of discipline, certain type of structure. I have some yeah. friends, former D1 friends that I went to school with, whether it was lacrosse, basketball, whatever, that I've either noticed or they've opened up to me about since their time of organized sports ended, which was in some cases, if they had like their fifth year eligibility, 23, 24 years of their lives, that's all they knew. And their fitness went along with that. The day that their careers ended and they didn't go on to play professionally, it's almost as if they lost their love for fitness because mm. it was a it was attached to the game Work. that they loved, the yeah. sport that they loved. And so I thought about a lot of that had to do probably with no team camaraderie. So that just popped into my head when you said, Kyle doing this alone, and I'm sure he's got a team around him, but... There's no teammates around him. There's no yeah. organization around him. And that's easy. That's easier said than done uh, in the offseason when nobody's calling and yeah. you're on the other side of 30 and people are writing you off yeah. like Michael Lombardi. And right. You got, you got kids. You got a beautiful you wife. It's like, why not just why not just fall into this beautiful life? You know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for not just him, but just guys that even like last. I mean, over the years, think about who the Ravens have brought in that hadn't been with anybody, especially at the running back position, like a Melvin Gordon, like, you know, say what you want about Melvin, but like he makes sure that he is prepared and ready to go. Now, unfortunately for him, he hasn't been able to hold on to the ball consistently enough throughout his career, but guys that stay ready when they're not a part of organizations or practice squads, tremendous, tremendous respect. So they also asked him about, you know, why he wanted to come back to the Ravens. I mean, he definitely did. He made it clear he wanted to come back. So he talked about the fit. And how somebody told him that, you know, this could never happen. I think I've always been a Raven. <laughs> That's what Harbaugh says, right? Yeah, it's like the best answer I, it, it could be is, you know, I, I, I'll tell you a crazy story about this. I actually played for a former um, coach at one point who said that I wouldn't be a Raven, that I didn't fit that mold of a Raven. Huh. And it's kind of funny that it comes full circle that I am a Raven right. and, you know, so I'm it was a, a part former of it. Ravens coach who told you that when you were with a different team. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because we, got he, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, we won't go there, but it, it's just that I didn't fit, you know, yeah. his style of play. Interesting. You know, as far as what he was looking for. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, you know, the biggest guy because, you know, usually the Ravens have bigger OLBs mm -hmm. and all that being said, it's kind of, awesome to go back to the resilient part that no matter what people say you know you can do anything you ever want and to be a part of this organization top tier around some of the best players from Roquan to Justin Matabike to Kyle Hamilton Tyler Lindenbaum to you know our guy Lamar Jackson it's awesome and the other guys that are going to be on their way too from Bateman to Zay Flowers Brand Stevens. I, okay, I'll stop. Um, <laughs> List gets long. Yeah, it does. 
I like to. They try to give me name names. Yeah, we aren't going to go there, he says. Uh, It's funny because he didn't say whether it was a defensive coordinator or a coach, but of course I'm like, who could have said that? Who could have, like, I could see like a Rex Ryan saying something like that, you know, because he's kind of brash or maybe like a, uh, a, a Wink Martindale or something like that. But I'm just like, who? Who said it? You know what I mean? But it could have been like a linebacker coach for all we know. I have I have no idea. Uh, but that's hilarious that they were like, yeah, you could, you're never, it's it's almost like the Mike Tomlin thing, right? Where he's like, you're not a Raven. It's a little bit different because then he saw him as a stealer. But in this case, it was like, you're you're not a Raven. But they're who, like, it's like Kyle Van Noy is just like the latest iteration of somebody who was born to be a Raven. Like he just fits like a glove. The final clip and our takeaway from uh, this courtesy of the lounge KVN sit down with the lounge is, you know, that and them asking Kyle about JV and Clowney, of course, getting um, after a career year, getting as much deserved pay raise from the Carolina Panthers and whether or not that that impacted kind of Kyle's thinking. Right. Is that, that the proper way to set this one up? Yep. Here it is. I'm always going to cheer players on. Yeah. Um, You know, Clowney had a career year to be able to go back to Carolina um, in front of his family and friends is awesome. And he got an awesome deal with them. So very happy for J.D. Um, You know, I I had my set my eyes set on this place the whole time. Mm. Um, So it wasn't it wasn't a matter of if it was just a matter of when. That what he told you in Vegas or what? Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit different now that you've been paid, but definitely in Vegas, he was like, I don't know, we got to see, we got to see, got to talk to EDC about that money. Yep. So playful, but, and, and, and he deserved the raise and he got it. So, but he for real wanted, I know he wanted to come back. Like you, you got to make the money work, but he, he wanted to come back. Yeah. Ravens took a chance on him. He was sitting on the couch. And man, did that chance pay off? And to, to think that he and Jadavian played for the price tags that they did, given the production that they gave, remarkable, <laughs> remarkable. Seriously. And so at least you get one of the two back. It would have been a dream, kind of a dream, unrealistic scenario to bring both of them back, especially after seeing the figures that that Clowney signed, you know, with Carolina for. But the new dream is for Odafe and Ojabo just to take off. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. hopefully that's not unrealistic. Yeah. You know, one of the two. Well, maybe both it of them shouldn't have a be career unrealistic. Years would be. They're both they were both I mean Ojabo was projected to go higher than Odafe before yeah. his injury. So it yeah. sh- it shouldn't be. Maybe they need maybe or Ojabo especially needs more time, but it shouldn't be for Odafe. Yeah, I, I agree with yeah. that. I, I guess yeah the one caveat was the health. That would mm-hmm. make it unrealistic for me with a job of, but yep. all right, let's keep the conversation moving. Cause on Friday I was just chilling here in my, my studio, getting ready to close up shop for the weekend. And then Jeremy Fowler, ESPN reporter popped up on the TV screen on ESPN and had this to say, which I transcribed. Um, he was asked about the Ravens just overall plans at wide receiver. And he said, quote, receiver is still on the radar for Baltimore. They're looking around. They want a true X receiver for Lamar Jackson. He's never really had that. Somebody on the outside big who can win. And he would let he would go on to say that this isn't just necessarily through the draft. They are still looking at options in free agency, mid-tier level free agency, which is now what we're at. We're past yeah. the frenzy, of course. So, look, it just caught my eye because of the X element, obviously. Yeah. But – but then I was like, throughout the course of the next day, I'm thinking there's a lot of smoke screens this time of year with the draft upcoming. We know yeah. that. You're not really sure what to believe and what not to believe. What was your first reaction when you saw the tweet? Oh, I 100% believe it because um, because he's, he's specifically talking about uh, free agency. He's saying I'm not just talking about the draft, right? Yes. Uh, and the Ravens have already shown that when they brought in – with the visits with Josh Reynolds and Gallup. And um, it's it's like you said in that second tier, because that's where we are in free agency. And I also believe it because, um, not only, yeah, so because of those two, two visits, but also because, and I said this before they signed si- Kyle and after they signed Kyle, you want to plug obvious glaring holes. Now, this one is not as obviously glaring because you Bateman 
Bateman, you could put in that X. That's I'm sure what he wants to be. I mean, he's not like this huge, huge, huge figure, but he could play that, that role. And, um, and so, yeah, as Ravens win 16 is pointing out, like we grabbed OBJ right before the draft. Keep your eyes so, peeled these next couple of weeks leading up to it. But I don't think it's going to be one of these names. Like it, as soon as people hear this, a true X, you start thinking of big names. Like you can find a true X receiver in that body type, but it doesn't mean that they're like this big name. It doesn't mean they're going to go out and trade or, or whatever they could. But to me, it's more in the realm of what they were doing with Reynolds or Gallup. You know what I mean? So, um, and then that way, because they don't have that body type, uh, on, on the roster, then they don't feel like they would need to reach in the draft. So to me, when I read this, I was like, yeah, this is definitely true. Cause they've been telling us it's true through their visits. They have, they have a lot of which fall into this list right now. Let's go big screen just so that, because some people have been reaching out being like, well, well, who is out there, you know? And yeah, so I went and did a little bit of a deep dive in terms of which unrestricted free agent wide receivers are actually available right now. And so some of the guys on this list, you've already, well, first of all, Odell Beckham Jr., of course, is on this list, but that return to Baltimore is is very unlikely based on his Instagram post and the and the price tag. Deontay Hardy, we know, former Buffalo, New Orleans, return man, a wide receiver. He was uh, in Baltimore for a reported visit on Friday. You had a Michael Gallup visit two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Reynolds was on this list prior to him signing, and he was reportedly in Baltimore. Laquan Treadwell spent time on the practice squad last year. So, you know, and you've got other names that are a little bit more intriguing, right? Like the Allen Robinsons, the Michael, well, I already mentioned Gallup. Marquez Valdez Scantling with Kansas City. Um, McCole Hardman, Marquise Goodwin. But this is the list right here. Not many needle movers, but if you're putting the draft aside, kind of like the Ravens have been showing to your point, Sarah, with their visits. Yeah. This is the list that they're working with. Uh, now, I don't know that this 100% fits into like, oh, true X, whatever. But it, it, the actual Kyle Van Noy signing helps me articulate what I've been trying to say with Rashad Bateman. Okay. So the dream is for Odafe Owe and David Ojabo to become the first, like realize the potential everyone saw when they be, were first round draft picks. Yeah. That's the dream. Yeah. And you bet on them, but you have insurance. And Kyle Van Noy is excellent insurance. Yeah. But it, he's he, it's not to the point. The Ravens aren't going to feel like, though, that if they start seeing David Ajabo and Odafe Owe take a giant leap forward, they're not going to feel like, Oh, but we still have to put Kyle Van Noy on the field. We have to do it because we're we're paying an arm and a leg, mm-hmm. and he deserves that. No, Kyle Van Noy is the perfect insurance while you're betting on your two guys who are still on their rookie contracts. So to me, I want to see somebody in there. Nelson's already in there, so that is helpful. I want to see a Kyle Van Noy type signing where it's like you know he's good for the production. Not not gonna be like out of this world, but you know he he's going to be good for the room. He's going to be good for the production. He's a leader. To me, somebody who I feel like I know would be good for the production is Tyler Boyd. Like, yeah. I, and I've I've said that. Like, Tyler, Bo- Tyler Boyd, I'm looking at his numbers, and it's not like his his prime, and that's not what KV, KVN is in either, right? He's not in when he was in his prime when he won two Super Bowls. Also but, think about but, the wide receiver know, you, room that he's been playing with, too, and Cincy. Right. It, right. And so like, I'm looking at his numbers and it's like, it's definitely declining. Don't get me wrong. But like the last three years, 828, 762, 667 in terms of yards, you know, putting up around five touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, you know, that if like, if, if Bateman didn't take that next step and you have to leave room for him to do that, which you could do with like a Nelson Aguilar or a Tyler Boyd, right? On on the roster. But you don't feel like if you sign Tyler Boyd, you're not gonna like spend an arm and a leg. And you don't feel like, ooh, I have to get him out there, where you did with OBJ. You felt like you had to get him his his targets. And he still didn't get as much as I'm sure he would have loved, and neither did Bateman. 
So to me, it's like you get somebody that's solid like KVN as insurance, but isn't gonna, isn't gonna like make you feel like you have to take away snaps if Bateman's really taking that next step. Tell you what, the measurables of what it means to be that prototypical X don't always end up panning out. And one guy on this right-hand side of the list that makes me think that, that I'm just seeing now is there, is Miles Boykin. Man, <laughs> oh man. Think about that, what he was supposed yeah. to be in Baltimore. Yeah. Goodness. He is on this list and available on the open market. Anybody want to take a flyer? Mm, I, I do not. <laughs> but but by the way, while I'm sure they're looking for an X, they don't have to reach for it. I am still hoping for that X in the draft. For sure. Maybe one of those dudes could be Adnai Mitchell, A.D. Mitchell, Texas wide receiver. PFF put out a little tweet earlier today that the most selected player at pick 30 by Ravens fans, again, just by Ravens fans, but who knows? Ravens fans are very intelligent. Uh, in their mock draft simulator is A.D. Mitchell, the wide receiver out of Texas, 18.8% of you. Maybe some of you on here have mocked A.D. to Baltimore. Uh, well, that was, that just reminds me of when we had Emery Hunt on, on Friday. Right. And we gave him, I, I gave him the scenario of, uh, uh, Guyton. Who else did I have? Uh, Guyton. I had, who else did you then have? I there? had, um, Oh, uh, chop Robinson. And then, uh, Cooper to Gene Cooper and, DeGene, AD. and then AD. And he didn't even hesitate. He's like, Oh, give me Adonai Mitchell. Give it yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. you know, and I'm glad you just mentioned that because I have a clip here from and, and gosh, if we could recommend any episode that we've ever done, this has to be up there at the top along with our Roquan stuff and Steve Young and um, Emery Hunt is a draft analyst. He works for CBS Sports. He has his own site called FootballGamePlan.com, and we had him on. I used to do show freelance broadcasting with him, like in my early career days down in the DC area. Um, and he's just so incredibly knowledgeable, as we've learned, and been, I've been reminded of the last couple of years that we've had him on pre-draft. And so go check that out in our archives. But we do have one little clip for you in the meantime, and that is a question that I asked related to the whole like, well, what if you do bring in maybe not your traditional ex, somebody who does have some similar traits and style to somebody you already have in a Zay Flowers? Is there any benefit or disadvantage? to doing so. I enjoyed his answer. When it's week nine and we're out watching football games, right? And you say you're watching the Miami Dolphins. Do you care that both Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are 5'10"? <laughs> no one cares, right? No one cares. Well, this guy is – no, you just care if they're good. So if you find good receivers, no one – and it, people just started watching football, I feel like, in 2010 because they forget, you know, things like the Smurfs. They forget the three amigos. They forget that Cincinnati in the division has three tall wide receivers. It doesn't matter the height differential across the board. As long as these dudes can play, get you some good receivers mm -hmm. and uh, everything else will fall into place. So he talked to someone that, that lives by the motto, size is not a skill. If you're good enough, you're big enough. I.E. Keaton Mitchell last year, whenever I was tripping out his, oh, he's 179. I'm like, bro, you got to catch the 179 first to tackle the 179. I don't care. So if he's, if you feel like Xavier Worthy, who's a fantastic receiver, by the way, is doubling up the efforts on Zay Flowers, so be it. There's no downside having two Zay Flowers out there. It's like it's, you want elite players out there on the field. That's the name of the game. Amen. Listen. Amen. If you, if you guys aren't in on Emory, just know that this time last year he had Keaton Mitchell as his fourth rated running back. The same Keaton Mitchell who would go undrafted last year. This guy gets it. I love him. He brought it last week, and we're definitely going to try and have him on after the draft. So be on the lookout for that. Go hit him up on social media, football game plan on his YouTube channel, uh, footballgameplan.com. So some off-season workouts to dive into. Yeah, so it's it's just always fun. I never want to read too much into it, but always fun to look at who's working out. So we saw Isaiah Likely. He put up some some footage of his him working out this this off season. There we go. Uh, oh my gosh, I just want him and Mark to to break out at the same time. Showing talk about. I mean, this is one question we need to ask Todd once we talk to him. It's one of the biggest questions we always get. What about putting Isaiah Likely out at X every once in a while? 
I feel like somebody That's asked John genius. Harbaugh that a while back, and he pooped the, the idea. Way, look at the yeah, way this yeah, played dude. again. I mean, look the the measurables of a tight end, and yet the eye test tells you he's a wide receiver. He is so friggin' special. Look at the way he's built. Look at how quickly he moves left to right on a dime. <laughs> the lateral quickness, tight ends shouldn't be able to do that. They shouldn't be able to move like this. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm actually looking up. I Like, as I was watching this and I brought this up, I, I got to look it up. I swear I remember somebody asking John Harbaugh about Isaiah Likely playing receiver, and, the, and I think he, he poo-pooed the idea. But... Um, <laughs> But then again, he also said they were going to move Stevens back to safety full time. And then he just became like their best corner last year. So uh -huh. who knows? But I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to revisit that. So, but look at him. Look at him go. Look at him climbing those ladders. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. I, he's going to be a fan favorite, if, if not already. He, he's just such a, oh, he's, he's a guy that, well, he, he's so loved that. And I don't know why we do this. I don't know why we do this. I don't know why we have to do this. I know where you're You know going. that you can love Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews at the same time, right? Like, we can love that. And when we say, well, like, when Mark's on, on the field, then Lamar just force feeds it to him. Well, that's something for Lamar and Todd Munkin to work out. That's not – that should not – you should not penalize Mark Andrews for that. You do not want less good players. We just had Emery Hunt on here. Who cares if you have two Zays? They both can produce – figure out how to use them. I he do. talks about the Bengals. They all have big, tall, wide receivers. Who cares that they don't have like one tall and then one short? Like who cares? We have two phenomenal tight ends. Let's not poo-poo Mark. Let's challenge Todd Munkin and Lamar Jackson to get them both out there going at the same time. Wait, but I want the big body. Don't tell Emery that. Oh. <laughs> who Even else is after replaying it and you know that you love what he just said, you still. I appreciated it. <laughs> But then I, I even said this during my live stream on Friday. I'm like, it didn't sway me that much, you know, to, to go back on my words. I still want that. I want to blend. I want, no, the, but what, I want here's the new the, element. I want the, that 50. Lamar, just throw it up there. Let it me, creates a margin of error when you got that big body out there. No, I, I got you. I got you. Listen, I got you. Here's what you're here. You tell me if I'm wrong. Here's what I, I think myself. you're really, here's what I think you're really saying. Okay. And which I agree with. If you can have the ideal X and he falls in your lap, that would be more ideal to have him compliment Zay Flowers and to give give that guy to Lamar 1,000%. Yeah. But if he doesn't fall to your lap, fine, you can't, fine, you can't yeah. be afraid to be like, okay, I'm going to go with like Zay and Ladd McConkie or something, which, by the way, I was listening to Move the Sticks and they were doing an offense-only draft. And I'm telling you, Jer Jeremiah, uh, Daniel Jeremiah loves Lad McC McConkie. Loves him. Lo yeah. I mean, just like he like mocked him super early, super yeah. early. He just loved yeah. him. So, but but I we were talking about that with Lad and Zay and whether that could happen. It's like if that falls in your lap, and you, and you you listen. Here's the point that Emery's making. If you have a grade B X wide receiver that's right there or you have a grade A non-X wide receiver, you take the grade A. Yes. They're going to stick to their guns. They're not going to yeah. deviate from that at all. And I'm with you on that for sure. Right. They would, they'd be going against 27 years of draft philosophy if they were to do the, the alternative. Yeah. So I'm with you there. All right. Well, speaking of Zay Flowers, here he is doing workouts. And, uh, we, we know what this guy has oh in the agility gosh. department. <laughs> it's just like, you know, you know what's, oh, what is that? Like, what was he just doing? He, oh, yeah. how do you, how do you rewind that? Rewind here. whatever movie. I'm going to drag way. it right here. Let's see here what happens go. here. Where he's hopping on two feet, but he's doing it. He's oh, doing yeah. it so fast. It looks like he's running. Here, let's go watch this. Like Bobby. He we can need Kadri on here to tell us what that is. What is this right here? Somebody in the comments, I'm sure, said too. <laughs> like, he, him hopping on two feet at a time and me running normal, he could probably beat me in a race <laughs> still. <laughs> I love it. The South Floridian fields, just a public field. This is my favorite part about this type of stuff this time of year. These dudes, yeah. a lot of which are on the Ravens that are from South Florida, they're just, they're just working out in the neighborhood park. 
They got right. Their crew and with and them. by the way, I don't I don't like to read too much into any any of these. Like just because Nelson Aguilar, for example, isn't posting one, doesn't mean he's not working. Or Lamar Jackson isn't posting one right now, doesn't mean he's not working. Like so, I don't want to like yeah. read into it too much. However, uh, because I also, by the way, some of it is kind of generational. I feel like these younger guys do it more. Um, and it's kind of personality type, right? Like you put a lot of your personal life up on social media. I put almost nothing in my personal yeah. life up on. So it's part of it's like, per, like your personal, like how much you want to put your life out there and how much you just want to keep to yourself. Um, but that being said, there, there is something about Zay and his mentality that I love. Mm -hmm. I love. And it's like, the way he plays, it's his mindset too, man. He yeah. just, he is, he is hungry. He's got that inner D A W G. You know, it just, Oh, I love him. You just made me think of one, one thought that I've seen on, on social at times throughout the last year or so. I think because of the geographical convenience of where these guys are this time of year, it's very oh, easy true. for Nelly Lamar and Zay in particular to link up right in the South Florida area. Right. Cause the weather is conducive to it. Yeah. That, but also yeah. just the fact that they're all together yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in that area. And I've seen Bateman kind of catch some strays about him not being involved. Now I think a lot of that had to do with last summer, but remember he was still coming back from the, what? It was the Liz Frank, right? It, yeah. the, the, the foot setback. So, but I also kind of, I understand the sentiment because we haven't, I haven't seen it if at all this time of year. Yeah. But to your point, there's differences in generation. Well, not that he's older. Yet. I mean, they're all around the same age, but there, there are differences in terms of preference. He may not just be, he may not be putting his stuff out there. The right. But I to totally agree. Totally agree. It would be cool. It, just, just if it were just for like the look of it alone, knowing how much the Ravens are betting on Bateman this year and knowing how often we see him get open, but then, but just not a connection there. I think it's fair to say it seems like there's a lack of chemistry between Lamar and Bateman. So just, just for, just to put fans minds at ease, make it'd a trip. be cool if he made a, a trip, trip go yep. take a vacation in Florida, yep. you know, like go do Miami or go do the keys or go do whatever, go take a beach vacation and either on the front of it or to the end of it, stop by and like run some pat, run some routes and catch some balls from Lamar. And it sounds silly, be... right? To put so much weight and an emphasis on optics, but like, yeah, there's more to it. First of all, you're getting to get, you're getting together with your guys and, and you're working on the nuances. Yeah. But then also you check the optics box. So it's one less thing that you have to worry about right. throughout the season because we've seen throughout Rashad's career that sometimes he can get a little bit too caught up in what's at, what's being said about him online, which is very easy to do. A lot of players do that. When it's days. one app away, one yeah. click away. So why don't you just take you, he, a, a portion of, now let's be honest, a, a portion of the fan base is always going to look at him in, in their own way. And that's their prerogative. But think about how, how much of the optics would change a good chunk, I'm sure, of the fan base if he were to make a trip and it's something as simple as let's just throw this up there and make sure everybody understands <laughs> that we're it sounds silly. Yeah. But when you think when when you think about what's plagued him off the field up here almost um over his years, it it, it could alleviate a lot of that. I do think it would probably just because I do think people read too much into these, I do think it would like soothe their minds yeah. and maybe get behind Bateman a little bit more and cheer him on a little bit more. Yeah. But uh speaking of workouts. <laughs> I pulled this more because the the pitcher, but Wisconsin running back uh, Braylon Allen worked out with uh, Ravens running Ravens running back, not Titans running back. Ravens running back Derek Henry. That's right. Say it proudly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I'm proud. All right. But but <laughs> take a look at this photo, Bobby. Like all three of these dudes. You you walk past any of these dudes on the street, and you're like, that's a that's an athlete, right? That's a fit, athletic dude, and yet. And yet, somehow, Derrick Henry takes it up, takes it up a notch. Like it's child's play. Allen's Look about to enter the NFL. Who knows what his career is going to be? But I mean, this is a top collegiate running back about to enter the NFL, and then Derrick Henry 
looks like a man among boys, even, even, even though those are not, bo- those are like grown athletes right there. I mean, he just look at like every muscle, look above his kneecap and his quads. Look at his, look at his shoulders. Look at his arms. It's just like, <laughs> I, I just can't imagine trying to tackle him. I, I don't care how big you are when he's coming full speed. My gosh. Okay. Let's look at a couple different things in specifically here when it comes to dissecting Derek's sculpt. Okay. Look at his quads. Look at those okay. quads. The quads are absolutely popping. And okay. he's just standing there. Just standing. The quads are bursting out of his shorts. Okay. <laughs> which are short shorts. Good for working out. Look at the biceps. The biceps. His shoulders leading up to his neck. His neck. Are made of steel. His hands look like they're basketball player hands. Yeah. His forearms are like telephone poles. <laughs> we can't see his core, but I'm sure that looks like a cutting board. <laughs> As Tila says, yes, he is a brick S house. Look at this guy. Yeah. And yet he's not that tall. Now, Wait, cor- isn't he? Compared to other running backs, yes. But I'm when you look at the – I'm just saying compared to the two guys he's standing next to. Yes, he's oh. significantly tall. Yes, he's taller than them. But he's not like basketball player tall. He's 6'3". So, That's well, huge for a running back. For sure. But on a hoop court, he would look small in the NBA. Yeah. So – All right. <laughs> I'm just saying – I'm just saying you can pick out probably – a hundred different aspects of this guy's body right now. And that's what makes him. Yeah. Eileen's right. He is the incredible Hulk 2.0. And he just so happens to be Baltimore's incredible Hulk. That's right. Oh, in the backfield with Lamar Jackson. Let's go. How'd we do? We just dissected every, every part. I'm sorry though. I I had to like, how could you, how do you not see it? You know, pretty sensational. Anyway, anyway, speaking of workouts, Oh, just because we covered the Stefan Diggs trade. Here he is. He's already with his 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 quarterback, CJ Stroud, put up on IG and the Houston uh oh, that is not the Houston Texans. I'm just now seeing it. Uh, Houston Stressens. <laughs> yeah. Texans commenter. Fooled I, you. That was that was good. But anyways, what are we looking at? Wrong answers only. Anyway, uh, uh a lot of jealousy working. going on there. Of course, Ravens fans re- wanted to see like the whole Ravens. Re- we just talked about Bateman and all that. We don't need to revisit it, but there that is going on. They're 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 getting better over there. They're getting better. No For sure. doubt about it. What else we got here? Here we go. Well, here we big, go. Whose yeah. birthday is it? That's right. That's right. Twenty seven years young, going on forty seven with the way that he acts and commands and dominates a locker room. Well, look at Roquan that. Smith. There he yes. is. Ravens. Happy birthday to the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, Roe is currently in some tropical area. Been going back and forth with him on Instagram, actually, which has been funny about what he's been up to this offseason. And and by the way, just know we are going to do everything in our power to ensure that uh, we get a second season partnering with Roe. Oh, so we're going to do any, anything we possibly can. But today's about celebrating who's become a, obviously a cornerstone piece to this team. A happy 27th birthday, Roe. Happy birthday, Roe. Man. Happy birthday. Let this be the best year yet. Best year yet. What else we got here? Oh, this bothered me a little bit. I shouldn't let it bother me because it's just random people on Twitter. But obviously the um, women's college national championship was yesterday. And uh, Iowa lost to South Carolina. And so uh, Caitlin Clark loses in the championship game for second season in a row. Last year, I think she beat South Carolina, right? And then lost to and LSU. To the final four, yeah. Right. And then lost to L- or beat LSU this year in the rematch, but then lost to South Carolina. So of course, people always have jokes, can never appreciate greatness. It's just always something. So uh, this person here puts two players that can't get it done when it matters most and then puts a picture of Caitlin and Lamar. It, it really does bother me. It bothers me that like we're back there. We're in an era of like either you're the goat or you're trash and there's no in between. I hate that. I, I hate that. I just, I want to appreciate 
what people do and their hard work and their sacrifice and their, their athleticism and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, we know that the best teams don't always win. That's just not, that's just not the case. And we've heard, I feel like I've heard Tom Brady be like, sometimes they weren't the best team and they were either able to win or his best teams didn't win. And he's got so many rings and, and whatnot. And I'm just like, why can't we just appreciate, why can't we just appreciate good games and good athletes and all that they do? And, um, listen, both these, both these people are going to get it. And by the way, they have gotten it done, done when it matters. They have gotten it done when it matters. Um, and so it just hasn't been their time yet. So I did not expect to wake up. I love, I love Lamar Jackson and I really enjoyed, here's what's funny, Bobby. I played, that was my sport. I played hoops. I played through high school varsity team. I was a captain, all that kind of stuff was not good enough to even play in college. Um, but even as like a, female basketball player. I just don't watch the WNBA. Frankly, I haven't even been watching the NBA as much just because we're so caught up with the Ravens and the NFL, but Caitlin brought me back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Lamar brings you, you want to watch these guys. You want to watch them. And I want nothing more than for the both of them to win at the highest, highest levels. I want them to win championships. I want them both to win it. I just, I really enjoy both of them. First Obviously. of all, this dude, this dude, Chris, whose handle is offensive player of the year, Chase, clearly has a Bengals tie. <laughs> oh, so there we go. He's not even deserving there of our go. time and attention right now. But there we go. But uh, the Caitlin Clark discourse has been very, I would say, surprising, but it's not surprising at all. In the dude, her shot, your your social your... media era that we're living in, like you said, people offended by greatness. People are in some cases afraid grace greatness and it's just so ridiculous to watch unfold even from like WNBA players giving her all kinds of hell on on social like what you guys are supposed to be building her up because what Caitlin has done not only just over the last month en route to the national championship game but throughout her historic career at Iowa is build the game up to the point where there have been no, there's been no greater time in women's college basketball than this last season ever in the history of it. Yeah. Viewership would tell you that. Yeah. Overall interest would tell you that. Ratings would tell you that. And Caitlin has a major hand in all of that. So if anything, the for, the past, present, whoever's speaking about it in in these terms should appreciate that because she's building the entire game up she will and it was put, a blast to watch. She will put more way. people in the seats, Bobby. She will put more and oh. which only helps all women basketball players that they, they want to keep, you know, bringing the sport up. Caitlin's Caitlin's going to help do that. Oh. So I know when she's near me, I'm going to want to go watch. She is Her, the way she can shoot from like five feet beyond the arc is unreal. Unreal. Iowa basketball. Well, the last thing I'll say too, is if you want to compare the benches, for example, sixth, seventh, eighth men, right, um, right. in this in this case, women, uh, from South Carolina, Iowa, it's incomparable. Yeah. Okay. The 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 bench points that South Carolina got from their non-starters throughout the entire tournament, but especially in the in the final four, and you compare that to Iowa, there is no comparison. Yeah. So in a lot of ways. Caitlin was doing this, not by her. So that's disrespectful to her. No, because she does. She does. I mean, once you start watching the games, you're like, oh, okay, there's talent. Oh, not only on Iowa's team, but like just her bringing me back to the sport. And I'm like, and it's not like I didn't know this already, but like it just brought me back. And I'm just like, look at all of these women that can play. Yep. I mean, all of them. Yep. They're so talented. And look, you know, Angel Reese has become LSU's standout. She'll be a she'll be a lottery be pick in the, in the WNBA draft. She's a polarizing figure for sure, and Caitlin has become that as well for whatever reason. Um, Angel's from Baltimore, yes, so she is. she is just as much of a part of this yeah. as Caitlin's been in terms of building the sport up to the point where both of these two have platforms, and they now have almost like a commit. They they have like this this noble duty almost spearheading this new era of, of college bat of, of women's basketball. I say, I say college bat. This is going to continue going to the them. WNBA. Into That's the what WNBA. I'm excited about as much as it's been like this back and forth. Like, uh, like I want to see this for the next 10 years. You know what I mean? 
where you see Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark going back and forth for like the next 10 years. Like how fun is that going to be to watch? Absolutely. Oh, happy for the game. And I'm happy totally for with the you. game. We, we love, we love basketball just as much as we do football. We don't get to talk about it. Very and often. I don't have as much time to watch it because yep. it's not what we do. Right. Yep. So a lot of fun. A lot, of, a lot fun. of fun. All right, let's finish up here. A couple more quick hits. Good on uh, the Ravens and O's here. Yeah, they, go they for combined it. Combined to donate ten million dollars to the Key Bridge Emergency Fund. So ten million joint combination donation here from um, from the Ravens and Orioles. So good on you guys. Obviously, the rebuild process is going to be very long and vast and complicated. I'm sure. So that'll help, um, and and hopefully it'll help the families out as well that are dealing with the aftermath of of tragedy. Then this weekend, the Ravens hosted over 450 athletes for the annual Play Like a Raven um, and Girls Flag football clinics. They learned the game from the pros and members of the Ravens coaching staff. So great community work being done by the hometown team. A lot of fun. And then we have one super chat, I believe, before we jump here. Okay. And it's our guy, Dre Dog. Uh, can you guys take a look at Chase Claypool for me? Get him cheap. He's 6'4", 230. Why is he not being talked about? Uh, my first my first thought on this is the off the field stuff. I don't think he's been a great fit in a lot of teams' cultures. I think he's been more of a headache than he has, um, pro, you know, in terms of productivity. I think Mike Tomlin would, would probably tell you that, and his stop since might tell you that after Pittsburgh. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. There, he, he's somebody that um, has caused more problems than than the alternative. Uh, I don't, I don't know his off the field story much. Um, I will say this though. Um, but yeah, six, four, two thirty. my goodness. Uh, but it is kind of funny because the Steelers have such a history of, uh, wide receivers that are super talented, but seem like are tougher to deal with inside the locker room. Yeah. And so like, it's funny. Cause every time I read, um, a wide receiver write up. And if they have, you know, these red flags, the quote unquote red flags, everybody's like, ah, he's a stealer. <laughs> oh, he's a stealer. Talented, but red flags. He's a stealer. So sign him up. <laughs> sign him up. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I don't, I don't know all that. You know it better than me, but it's a maturity sure did, stuff. He it's sure did stuff. produce. He sure did. It's, it's just, um, yeah, maturity stuff, lack of judgment. That type of thing. So we'll see. See if he gets another shot because uh, you only get so many in the NFL. All right. Well, let's see. That, that is an hour. And we have one more thing to add before we close. And that is what's almost two weeks away. And there's over 3,500 of you concurrently watching us right now. So thanks for Jeez. hopping on the On a Monday, a random Monday, no big news. Yeah. 3,500 people. Thank you, everybody. That's great. That is we, awesome. We would be thrilled if a fraction of you could come to our first ever in-person marathon draft party live stream, which is coming up Thursday, April 25th at Soundstage in downtown Baltimore. It's the first time we're going to be working with a legitimate concert hall venue. We are fired up about this so much so Sarah's flying in from Columbus for it. 40 bucks gets you inside the door. That includes a premium tailgate buffet, clean cuisine. One of my brand sponsors on the personal side of things that I do is coming over to the vault for the night. We are so fired up about Jerry and Aaron and their great crew coming out with delicious food. Uh, you can live stream it on YouTube. It will be available if you can't make this event in person. But just know we're going to make it worth it if you come on out. It's going to be worth it regardless. But it would mean a lot, a lot for us to make a great first impression with a legitimate venue in Baltimore, if you guys would come out. We're going to have video boards up there so we can watch the picks as they come in all the way to the 30th. You'll have a chance to, to watch Sarah and I in person as we go about our normal duties. It's going to start at 7 o'clock and go up until after because we'll have analysis after, after the Ravens make their pick. So a uh, big opportunity for us, to say the very least. Can't wait to see you again in person, partner. And hopefully, hopefully some of our loyal vaulters uh, will, will head on out to soundstage. The energy is just going to be off the chart. It's just going to be off the chart. It's The draft is Christmas in Baltimore, always, because that's how the Ravens build. 
and we will have everything from a Ravens angle. We'll, we'll cover all the picks, I'll do it from a Ravens angle. We'll have plenty of guests. In fact, Bobby and I have a uh, draft meeting here that we got to pull yeah. together, right, Bobby? Both today yeah. and tomorrow, trying yeah. to get everything together from, from guests to sponsors to all of it. Like it's, yeah. it's going to be, it's going to have high energy. Make sure you come out or at least tune in if you're from out of, out of state. As we start to get these meetings together and whatnot, we would love recommendations, suggestions, anything that you guys may have or want to envision for us this night. Hit us up, Baltimore Ravens Vault at gmail.com via email to drop a suggestion. Uh, and just know, just know this is taking an equal, if not more, amount of work uh, than what it took to get Roquan on for the season. Yeah. So we're doing it for you. We cannot wait. Uh, Dre Dog's going to be there. I'm going to be in the building. It sounds great. I love that. I love that. Tickets are available right now in the show notes below, in the description of this video, or on Ticketmaster.com. It's all through Soundstage. We're fired up about it, as you can probably tell. And uh, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. Tickets are available. We'd love love to have you. So special thanks to Manta Sleep for sponsoring our live stream and our channel all off-season long. Thanks to my partner and co-host, Sarah Ellison, I'm Bobby Trossett signing off from this Monday Ravens Lunch Hour live stream. We'll be back with you in 23 hours from now, 12 noon Eastern on Tuesday the 9th. We will talk to you then. As always, please uh, like this video if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe to The Vault if you haven't already done so. And check us out in audio-only form as well, where we're available on the likes of Apple, Spotify, Google Play, uh, and wherever you get your podcasts. Talk to you guys soon. Appreciate you.